Praise the Lord. This is Elder Henry Reinhardt. Again, and I want to come to you with a special teaching today. And it has to do with a with a very special topic. And it relates to the very important precept that we should rightly divide the word of truth. Often, as children of God, when we read the Holy Scriptures, we fail to do this. And, of course, the responsibility for rightly dividing the word of truth primarily rests with pastors and teachers. For when this command to rightly divide the word of truth was given, it was given to Timothy, one of the sons in the faith of the Apostle Paul. Timothy was a pastor, and Paul admonished him to rightly divide the word of truth. But when God speaks, we must know whom God is speaking to. Let me repeat that. When God speaks, we must know whom God is speaking to. I have a passage of scripture that I want to read, and then when I'm done reading that passage of scripture, I'm going to show you by looking at that scripture and by examining it very carefully why it is so important to understand whom God is speaking to when he speaks. I'm going to read a passage from 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter, verse 14. And it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, Pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now, when it comes to this verse of Scripture, from Second Chronicles, often I hear people in the United States invoke this scripture verse when they're talking about the sinfulness of the people of the United States. But here's the thing, can, can we really invoke promises of this verse of scripture in reference to the land of the United States of America. In order to rightly divide the word of truth and to make sure we are applying the word of God correctly, we must ask ourselves, what is the context of this scripture verse that I just read? And who was the Lord talking to when he said what he did in verse 14 of Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter? The context 
of this passage concerns God's answer to a prayer that King Solomon, David's son, had made before the Lord. You see, Solomon had just finished building and dedicating the temple in Jerusalem. And following his dedication, fire came down from God out of heaven and consumed all the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple so powerfully that no one could enter the temple. In his prayer, Solomon had detailed a lot of different scenarios of transgressions that the people could commit, and in each case, he asked the Lord to accept their prayer and to heal their land if they would repent and turn from whatever wickedness they would be involved in. And notice, and notice that the Notice in this prayer that Solomon is going before the Lord and asking these things collectively for Israel as a nation. Keep that in mind. So later that night, the Lord appeared to Solomon. And he let Solomon know that he had heard his prayer. And he answered Solomon. And I'm going to read a passage of scriptures here from that same chapter, but I'm going to include more than just verse 14 and to give you a complete, a more complete sense of what the Lord said to Solomon and why. From 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 11 through 15, here's what it said. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord, and the king's house. And all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house, he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be opened and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. One key condition for the Lord hearing their prayer and healing their land was that their prayer had to be made 
at the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. If we examine verse 14 carefully, we will see that it is a very specific promise to a specific people. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, God was talking specifically about the children of Israel whom he had chosen out of all the peoples in the earth. Only Israel was called by his name. Notice that the conditions the Lord laid out involve the collective nation of Israel. Not just one or two people or a small group of people. Now, that does not mean that God would not hear the prayer of an individual. But the emphasis is on the people as a whole. The word there is repeated again and again and again. The entire nation of Israel would have to collectively humble themselves and pray and seek God's face. Even more important than humbling themselves and praying collectively, they would have to collectively turn from their wicked ways. In other words, they would have to repent and turn away from the evil works that they would be involved in. Just humbling themselves and praying would not be enough for God to deliver and heal them. But if the people of Israel would humble themselves and pray and turn from their evil ways as an entire nation, God would forgive their sins and he would heal their land. This was the promise, the conditional promise. Also, and this is very important, Solomon prayed that the stranger in the land would also be heard if they came and prayed at the house of God in Jerusalem. And this is written. Moreover, concerning the stranger, which is not of thy people Israel, but is come from a far country, for thy great name's sake, and the mighty, and thy mighty hand, and thy stretched out arm, if they come and pray in this house, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name, and fear thee, as doth thy people Israel, and may know that this house, which I have built, is called by thy name. That came from Second Chronicles chapter 6, verses 32 through 33. So within the context of this scripture passage, can we apply this scripture 
to the United States of America. To answer that question, we must ask the question, are all the people of the United States, God's people, which are called by his name? The clear answer to that question is a resounding no. No. God did not call out this nation from all the other nations of the earth and make a covenant with this nation and give his name to this nation. Those things did not happen in regard to the United States of America. Not only did it not happen with the United States of America, it did not happen to any other nation on the face of the earth. Only one nation was chosen out of all the other nations of the earth and given these things, and that was the nation of Israel. Yes, there are people in this nation, in the United States, who believe in God, and some of them actually believe God. But there are also many people in this nation who reject God, and some who actually worship God other false gods. But collectively, the people of this nation are not God's people now, nor have they ever collectively been God's people. And God has never made a covenant with this nation and called them out and giving his name to this nation. Now the scriptures say that righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. That is true for any nation of people. But that does not make them God's people. Having said those things, I believe if all the people of this nation were to somehow come together, declare a national fast, go down in prayer together as one and stop the evil they are committing in terms of adultery, fornication, lying, homosexuality, abortions, murders, thefts, etc., that the Lord would hear from heaven and he would heal our land. I believe he would show us mercy, just like he did to the city of Nineveh. He is a God of mercy, and he will respond to contrite and repentant hearts individually and collectively. But here's the question. Will this nation ever collectively do such a thing? I think not. I think not. That's just not going to happen. Glory to God. Let 
Another thing we have to understand is that in the time that God gave this promise to King Solomon and gave this condition to him, the nation of Israel was under a sovereign, a king. Being under sovereign, Solomon had the power or whoever, whatever king would be in authority after him, who would follow him. A sovereign has the power to command the people to fast, to command them to turn from what they're doing, to call a solemn prayer, and if they were, were to refuse, he has the power he had the power to literally have people put to death if they refused to obey that edict. In the case of Nineveh, which is one of the nations I mentioned to you, when Jonah was sent to Nineveh and Jonah arrived there at Nineveh after God had to get him together and to forcefully cause him to obey the word of God that he at first rebelled against and tried to run away and refused to obey. But when God finally put a little forceful uh, encouragement upon Jonah and he finally went to Nineveh, the king in Nineveh heard the message delivered by Jonah. And the king commanded everybody in Nineveh to go on a fast and to seek God in the hopes that God would turn from his wrath. And because of what the entire nation did, God did indeed turn from his wrath, and Nineveh was spared. But that's the kind of thing it would take. And the people of the United States, we do not live under a sovereign king. And if the president of the United States were to try and to compel all the people of the United States to obey such an edict, it wouldn't go very far at all. It just wouldn't work. It wouldn't happen. Amen. So, just as something we have to be aware of. Amen. The people of the United States are not going to collectively come together, and they're not going to collectively repent. They're not going to collectively turn from the evil. And believe me, there's quite a lot of evil going on in this nation, from the top of the government all the way through our society. Amen. But that's not going to happen. Let's face that and just acknowledge that fact. That is not going to happen in this nation. To be sure, this nation of the United States was largely established upon Judeo-Christian principles originally. Originally, especially in our system of laws, our system of laws were largely, originally now, I'm speaking originally, our system of laws was largely based upon Judeo-Christian principles. This is where we got our system, our legal system from, from the Holy Scriptures. Amen. This is this is where we basically got our scriptures, our, our legal system from, and where we derived the authority and whatnot from, from God and from the Holy Scriptures. And there was an attempt made in this young nation when at when it was first formed to base our legal system 
upon the Judeo-Christian principles which came from the Holy Scriptures. Did that mean that we were a perfect nation? No, of course not. Did that mean that there weren't issues in this nation despite what we tried to do? No, it doesn't mean that there weren't issues. But it did mean that we had righteousness in this nation, as imperfect as it was. We were making an attempt for our nation to have righteousness in terms of our legal structure and in terms of the righteousness that was supposed to be inherent in such a system. But over the years, even that has greatly changed to the point where many today are calling evil good and they're calling evil they're calling good, excuse me, evil. They're calling evil good. And they're calling good evil. This is, this is how deplorable things have become as a whole in the United States today. Glory to God. We have sanctioned things that are just evil. We have sanctioned the wholesale murder of our children. Over 60 million babies have been murdered in the womb since the Roe versus Wade decision of 1973 in this nation. In many places in this nation, murder is just running rampant. People are not being prosecuted for various crimes. People are being allowed to do pretty much what they want to do in this nation, and much of it is not even being prosecuted anymore. And when it comes to all manner of evil that is going on in this nation, Many who are supposed to be officers of the law and enforcers of the law are allowing it to go on with no consequences. This, this is, I mean, I don't even want to get too deep into that because this, this nation in many ways has become a, a laughing stock of the world. Amen. And the beacon that used to shine out as some sort of example to the other nations of the world has been darkened. The beacon does not shine very brightly anymore in this nation. Very sad to say. Glory to God. But we have become, this nation of the United States has become as Sodom and Gomorrah. And when you look around at what's happening in this nation, it brings up thoughts of the days of Noah, where only evil is in hearts, is in man's hearts. Only evil is 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 continually in man's hearts. Glory to God. This is this is where we have come to. Glory to God. And because many of the church are in the land, many of the true church of Jesus Christ dwell in this land of the United States. Because of that, God is merciful. And God has held back his judgment on this land from time to time. He hears the cries, the Lord does. The Lord hears the cries of his righteous people, the church that is in this land. Even in the midst of this extremely wicked land, called the United States, and God answers our prayers. Glory to God. The scriptures
scriptures say that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. God yet hears the prayers of the remnant of the church of Jesus Christ who are in this land and crying out to him. He hears their prayers, and because he hears their prayers, amen, often he extends mercy upon this nation. Amen. He extends mercy, and he's long-suffering, and God is very kind. But the day is coming that God will no longer abide what is going on in this nation. The day is coming that God's long-suffering is going to be cut off. And judgment is going to come upon this nation. But what we have to realize in this nation of the United States is that the promises, the very specific promises of Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 are not, are not, are not to the United States as a nation. Those promises are not to the United States. Glory to God. We are not God's people who are called by his name. We are not. We never have been. Glory to God. And those promises that God gave to King Solomon were for a specific time, a specific place, specific circumstances, glory to God, and a specific nation, the nation of Israel. Glory to God. That's who those promises were given to, and that's all. That is all those promises were given to was to the nation of Israel. So we cannot take Second Chronicles 7 chapter verse 14 and try to apply that to the United States. Glory to God. And for various reasons, that just doesn't work. It just doesn't work, and it will not work, and, and God will not honor that verse of scripture where the United States is concerned it has nothing to do with this nation. It never did, and it certainly doesn't have anything to do with it now. Glory to God. So, you know, we, we really need to stop quoting that scripture and stop trying to apply that scripture to the United States of America and all the conditions of that scripture. It just does not work. And it, it, we're taking scripture out of its context. We're not rightly dividing the word of truth. And we're deceiving ourselves to think that God is going to somehow honor that scripture where the United States is concerned. No, he's not. Glory to God. No, he's not. What I would encourage everyone to do, however, is to continue calling upon the Lord, to continue praying, amen, for God does hear the cries of his people and the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Despite everything else that's going on at the very pinnacles of power in this nation, in the White House on down, despite all the evil that's going on and despite all the rotten corruption that's going on from the very top all through this nation, God yet hears the cries of his people and God will yet look out for his people. Despite all the evil that's going on and despite 
glory to God, coming things that may be coming upon this nation. And despite certain judgments they may be coming upon this nation, God will yet look out for his people, for his people, for the church. Amen. And, and sadly, you know, speaking of corruption, sadly, even the visible church, much of the visible church has a corruption within it, like rottenness in, in, in someone's bones. Amen. Even within the visible church, there is much corruption. But there is always a remnant. Amen. The scripture says, nevertheless, despite everything that's going on, the scriptures say, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone who nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So there's still a remnant. There's still a remnant. And God still hears that remnant. And God will still answer that remnant. Will it change the course of the United States? No. It's not going to change the course of the United States. This nation is destined for destruction, and it's already, day by day, it's already being destroyed. And sadly, the people in power are deliberately destroying it. Amen. So no, it's not going to change the course of this nation, and it's not going to change the coming destruction of this nation. The most we can do as a church is to continue to pray, and make sure that we are ready for the coming of the Lord. The next big event that's going to happen, whether people believe it or not, doesn't make any difference whether they believe it or not, because you don't have to believe the truth in order for it to come to pass. But the next big event, big event that's going to happen in the earth is going to be the rapture. It's going to come without announcement. It's going to come suddenly. And, amen, people that are upon the earth and the dead in Christ are going to suddenly be summoned. And the Lord is going to descend from heaven to the clouds in the air. And the dead in Christ and those who are alive in Christ, who are holy and sanctified, are going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the clouds, in the air, and so shall they ever be with the Lord. And then judgment, the wrath of God, is going to be poured out upon this earth. So, glory to God. So, again, no. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, cannot be applied to this nation. It was never given to this nation. God never spoke this to this nation. He spoke it to one nation and one nation only, Israel. Amen. Now, you can accept or reject that. You know, that, that's up to you. But I'm telling you the truth, and the truth is, no, that verse of Scripture does not apply at all to the United States. God bless you.